In this video, we're going to do a brief walkthrough of TSM. We'll cover how to set up the app on your iPad for the first time, how to log in, and how to record both a service call and an install job. Note that the software is updated from time to time, so there may be variations from what is shown here. However, the principles here should get you up and running and hopefully answer most of your initial questions. You'll receive an email from MT Data with a link to the app. Open this email on your iPad and follow the link. You'll arrive at the TSM login page. We now want to add the app to your iPad's home screen for immediate access. Tap this box near the top right of your screen and then tap Add to Home Screen. Let's change the name to TSM and then tap Add. And here it is on your home screen. The first time you use the app, you'll need to enter the username you were provided with in the setup email, and if you have one, your password. The default view is the main job tab. Across the top of the tab are some controls that you can use to manage what is included in this view. Notably, a refresh button, which will reload the information and display any new jobs since you opened the page, filters for open, completed or all jobs, and filters for various date ranges. In the main part of the display, you can see the list of jobs. If you work your way across the column headings, these are fairly self-explanatory. To open a job, just tap on the date, which is shown in blue. We've set up a sample job here for this demonstration, so let's go ahead and open that. You may receive a warning that the job has unanswered checklist items. You can dismiss it for now by tapping OK. We can now scroll down and have a look at the job information, like the site contact person, vehicle details, any job notes, and the description of the service requested. If the vehicle is ready and we're able to start work, we can go up here and start the timer. However, if you're not able to start work because the vehicle is not ready or some similar issue, you'll need to change the timer description from service call to waiting time in this drop down list and then start the timer. Let's say the vehicle has now arrived and we can start work. So let's stop the wait timer, add a description if needed, and hit save. We can now go back to the timer drop down list and choose vehicle service call and start the timer. It's very important to be accurate with your use of the timer as this may affect customer billing. If the timer is used incorrectly, this can result in awkward customer queries which you may need to explain. So the first thing we need to do before we start pulling the vehicle apart is to go down to the job checklist. You'll note that the job checklist button is red which indicates that there are mandatory items that have not yet been completed. Here's the checklists page. Let's hit expand all to see the details. Scroll down to the pre-installed checklist. We can now see the checklist items. The items in red are mandatory, so you can't proceed until you complete them. For yes no items, you can tap the blue check mark to mark them yes. If it's an item that requires extra detail, for example pre-existing dashboard damage, tap the drop down to select Tech Add Comments and then enter the details in the comment field. Note that this item says Photos Required, so in a moment we'll show you how to add photos. Now we can tap Back to save. Now we need to scroll down to Documents to add photos. Tap Take Photo, and from here we can either open the camera and take a photo, or upload a photo which has been previously captured. In general, we recommend taking the photos separately, so that you don't have to keep launching the camera from the app, but either method is OK. For this demonstration, we'll just take a photo now and tap Use Photo. Now we just need to wait for the photo to upload. A file name is automatically generated, 
and here you need to add a brief description of what the photograph is. Tap the green S here for save. We're now ready to put the iPad down and go ahead and perform the work. It's critical to note any parts used and to note serial numbers of any you install or remove. You can do this on a piece of paper or by taking photos with your smartphone. As you work, you should also make sure that you take photos of the installed location of any equipment like antennas, tracking units, etc., as well as evidence that any repairs you've done have been successful. For example, the video monitor showing the cameras working, or the status page on Talon showing engine data being received. You'll need these photos for a later step when you're submitting the completed job and their important evidence in case there's any dispute about whether you completed the work properly. Once you've finished the work, phone support to ensure that the unit is transmitting data as expected and put the vehicle back together. We can now come back to the app to finish filling out the job card. Let's scroll back to the top and work our way through. Fill out all available vehicle details. Many of these will be pre-populated, but they've been left blank in our demo job. In our example, let's say it's a new truck that's not yet registered, but it has been labelled with a fleet ID number. The VIN should always be completed. In the drop-down list here, indicate who at support that you checked with. We checked with Jesse M in this case. Then select the time and date you made that call here. It defaults to the current date and time. If you're filling this out a long time after making the call, you may want to go in and edit the time so it's correct. Further down we have a section called Job Note, where you can record any other information about the job. For example, maybe you were unable to complete the work for some reason. Service Requested contains the details that field service initially provided about the work requested by the customer. Work Performed, as you'd expect, is where you describe the actual work that you just did. We'll come back to this in a moment. Note that the Job Checklist button is red, so let's go in there and complete the post-install checklist. This works the same way as the pre-install checklist we completed earlier. Remember, red items are mandatory. A special note about the SIM card field. If you've swapped out the SIM card, select Tech Add Comments and note any details and the new SIM card number. If you haven't touched the SIM card, you can just write NA in here. The black items can just be completed if they're applicable for the job. So now we're ready to lodge the job so that it can be invoiced to the customer. Tap this drop down box and then tap Yes Please. We can now tap Back and back on the Job Detail page we can see that the Job Checklist button is now yellow which indicates that mandatory items have been completed. Green means that all items have been completed. Let's now fill out the details in the Work Performed field. You can note the old and new serial numbers of any items you've replaced. Scroll down to Parts. This is where you record anything you've used from your stock including non-serial numbered items, for example antennas. Tap Add Part. You can search for parts here, like this. In this case, the second item here is the one we want, so let's tap on the part number to add it. Here it is. Now let's tap Save. Now we can tap back and we can see the part listed here on the job card. Let's go ahead and add the rest of the parts we've used. 
You can see here why, for items where there may be many parts with similar names, you might prefer to use the parts list which you should have received by email. Remember to tap Save again because we have added an item. You can see a section here for Time. This is populated automatically when you use the timer. Next we come to Equipment, which is where we'll add serial numbered items like tracking units. Once again, we can search by part number or name. And of course, you must enter the serial number. So now, this specific piece of equipment is assigned to this particular vehicle. In the Documents section, you should now add the photos you took of the work that you performed. We're nearly ready to lodge the job. We need a signature from the customer, so we'll tap the Job Signature button here. And get the customer to tick the acknowledgement, sign with their finger, and enter their name. If there's no one on site to sign, you can write that instead of their name. Then hit Save here. Now you'll also need to sign off the work yourself, which works the same way. After saving, you can now tap Back, and you'll see now that the Job Signature button is green. Finally, tap Complete. We receive a warning about unanswered job checklist questions, but note that this is only referring to the black, non-mandatory items which we left blank because they weren't applicable. So we'll hit OK. In this demo we've only added one image, so we're now being prompted to add more. Let's go back to the main job screen by tapping here. And we can see that the job has disappeared, because we have the view filtered to show only open and future jobs. If we want to review it, we can just change the filter to All or Completed Jobs and change the date to All Dates or Today. And here's our job at the bottom of the list. A final note, we will also be adding functionality for lodging IAP paperwork in the near future. Let's take a quick look at logging an install job. In most respects, it's very similar to logging a service job. One of the main differences is the number of photos you'll take. The idea is to photograph every piece of equipment you've installed, right down to the tablet cradle and the speaker and microphone for the phone hands-free. Again, we start by selecting the job we want to work with. Dismiss the checklist warning. And here are the job details. Let's start the timer. Now we'll go down to Job Checklist. And you'll see here is where a couple of things are a bit different to a service job. Complete the pre-install checklist as before. And we can tap Back. Looking again at the service requested, we can review what kind of installation we're supposed to be doing. In this case, it's a 4000 tracking unit, a tablet, a 1034 and a high gain antenna. So we can go ahead and perform the installation, remembering to photograph every piece of equipment we install and to note the serial numbers, as you'll need them later. When you come back to the app, you can add the photos to the Documents section, as before. For this demo, we're just using dummy photos to show how it works. You should also photograph the vehicle itself. 
If it's not registered, you can photograph the VIN plate. While you have the tracking unit to hand, it's also a good idea to pull out the SIM card and note the SIM number, as that may save some time down the track if the SIM needs to be activated by the telco. Again, you'll ring support to confirm that everything's working, put the vehicle back together and come to the job checklist. Expand all, and you can see the checklist is a bit different. High gain antenna, yes, we've fitted one of those. Audio, yes. J1939, that's CAN bus, yes. Down here, CAN bus has its own section in the checklist. Is CAN bus data visible by customer support? Yes. Note that again, only the red items are mandatory for all jobs. The black items can just be completed if they're applicable to your specific job. For example, we'll leave DVR functioning blank if no DVR is fitted. Install jobs have this general data section in the checklist. As you can see, there are a number of mandatory items, so make sure they're checked on the vehicle and then mark them off here. You can add additional detail. For example, we'll add a photo of the GPS antenna to show the location and make a note of that here. If you have additional detail, for example, maybe you couldn't test the phone because of the customer's SIM plan, it's a good idea to record this in the main job notes section. This helps to keep all the notes in one place. Here's where we submit the job for invoicing as before. And because we've finished, we can go ahead and do the post install checklist too. Let's tap save to make sure we don't lose our work. Add a full description of the work you've performed. We've installed the 4102 tracking unit, a 1034, the RAM cradle, high gain antenna, speaker and microphone. Engine data is present. We've verified that the tablet charges in the cradle. The phone works and this is a good place to note the phone number too. We've checked and confirmed tracking is working and all the details have been set up correctly. So let's save that. It's worth noting up here under job type that it's a prepaid install. So the customer has paid for the whole kit so we don't need to fill out details in the parts section unless you've had to use parts from your own stock. Again, under Equipment, we must list all these serial numbered items. So we have our 1034, our tracking unit, the tablet, if you forget to add the serial number, just tap the red minus here to delete the item and we'll try again, this time with the serial number. So that's it. Again, you need to get the customer signature as well as your own. If you need additional help with the application, see the original welcome email for details on how to get support.